Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. You are on a weird tripod. Today is Friday and I am gonna take you on a day in the life of. Today, like I said, is Friday. We actually were planning on being gone and having an ice storm, which I'm not about. I don't like ice. Um, but I brought like my bag home, my computer home, all the things, and in you know, in anticipation for not being here. But I am in fact at school. And yesterday was parent teacher conferences, and so we left school when it was dark, and I'm here when it's dark. I usually don't be here this early, but um, I am in charge of the Sunshine Committee, and we're celebrating winter birthdays. So December, uh, December, January, February birthdays. So I'm gonna make their little gift bags and yeah and then i'll kind of tell you what we're doing today in class and hope you're having a good day too and i will catch you here in just a bit Like I said, um, I know a lot of schools that do like a once a month potluck, um, but it was just hard on our staff. And so we decided as a committee to do once a quarter. Fall birthdays, winter, spring, and then summer, we celebrate at the end of the school year for the May. I don't know if I'm gonna include May, probably June, July. <clears throat> well, maybe June, whatever. I think I put August in the fall. August, September, October, November, maybe I didn't. Who knows anymore? I don't remember. So today, I always like to keep the gifts simple and sometimes practical. So these Amazon basic pins are amazing and they are like flare pins, but better, I feel like. And they have so many fun colors and they're way cheaper than the flare pins. So everyone's gonna get a pin. And then these fun sticky notes, um, I saw some that were kind of like naughty, like super funny, but I was like, hmm. Not everybody has the same humor. So I found these and they have some really cool quotes. Like this one says, winners are not people who never fail, but people who never quit. Um, so there's like different little motivational sayings on the sticky notes. And so everyone will get a pack of that. And then everyone is on a diet right now because <laughs> there's like a Biggest Loser competition happening. And so I'm gonna put a little bit of candy in there, not much. My fall birthdays, I put like, mostly candy um so they're gonna get one of these um always drink more water but this is good because there's not artificial sweeteners made from real lemons um gluten-free uh less than one gram of sugar and so these are really yummy and so we're gonna all put one in there and then a little bit of candy and call it good and the theme for the potluck was again everybody's on a diet is salads so chicken salads pasta salads couscous broccoli salads uh crackers and a um meat and cheese plate fruit so like yummy but also smart and healthy so yeah um i am needing to go change my standard today because they are going to be um continuing their i think i'm gonna write happy birthday on there that's how my brain works. They are gonna continue their novel. We're reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which if you know me, it's my favorite. They are really loving it. Yesterday we actually, um, chapter four is all about Edmund meeting the White Witch and she manipulates him by, you know, speaking to his stomach. Like she was like, what do you want in the whole world? Turkish delight. I'm like, Edmund? You were bought by food, boy. So she gave him Turkish Delight, so I had the kids try Turkish Delight. Which, again, if you followed me, there's an episode, I'm gonna put it right here, on how not to make Turkish Delight. 
because last year it tasted like wet tortillas because I forgot that in England, cornstarch is called corn flour and I put corn flour in, yeah. So anyways, we bought these from Amazon and they were actually really, really good. Um, I always like to just bring, you know, different experiences with novels because it just brings it to life and I wanna make long, like, what's it called? It's too early to think right now. Um, lifelong learners, lifelong readers specifically. So when you bring in their senses and more experiences with the book, they can make, make more connections. So we had Turkish Delight and hot chocolate yesterday while we read chapter four. Um, so that was super fun. Today we are actually going to take a poem called Isabel Adventures. And so um, it's about this little girl that comes across a bear and she has to, um, you know, get past the obstacles and stuff like that. So we're gonna compare Isabel with Lucy in The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. So some poetry analysis and some compare contrast characters, which is a major standard in fifth grade. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing today. So I need to go change my standards. I need to finish these because I got here early for that reason because I have morning duty in 15 minutes. So <laughs> let's get it together. Hey guys, it is now after school and uh, the potluck rent went, went, went very well. It went very well. And uh, yeah, we had chicken salad and meat and cheese plates and vegetables, fruit salad. So it went really well. And the gifts, um, I hope they liked them. From the few people that I saw, they enjoyed them. So that's good. Everybody loves a good pen, right? And some candy. I did want to mention something that I've been loving, especially with my interv intervention group. Um, I have really been doing tier one, um, but we're moving to a different intervention group and I'm going to be doing uh, tier two starting next week. And um, I'll share more about that later. But um, I've really been loving the news, uh, Scholastic News Leveled Informational Text. That's long title. Um, it looks weird because I cut them all out because um, they're differentiated, but they're back to back. So some of the levels are on the same page as the other levels. So to make copies, I just ripped them out and the kids eat it up. Like any interesting informational text, I mean, the weirder the better and whatever gets kids to read and learn more about and dig deeper into the text I'm like the weirder the better and that's totally fine with me because I love and I find them very interesting so last week we did the if you can eat them no if you can't beat them eat them and it's all about the lionfish in the Florida's um what was it the gulf the ecosystem in their ocean to where the lionfish are an invasive species and they are taking over and eating all of the other fish like groupers and so it's a really interesting article article i'm tired guys i'm tired the questions like are very in-depth dok2 dok3 depth of knowledge questions um and like I said, they really, really enjoy them, and there's always a writing component to it, and then I always find a video about the topic. So, we did that last week, and it went really well. This week, I have been giggling by myself because I'm the only one here. I've been laughing at these pictures because it's called The Ugly Truth, and uh, it talks about how... Um, we need to advocate for not just cute, lovable animals, but ugly ones too, because they're becoming instinct. 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 Not instinct. This isn't Justin Timberlake. I need to go home. It has this monkey. I can't even pronounce what it is, but it's a funky looking monkey. And uh, what are the other animals that mentions? the striped hyena and the blobfish, which we all, all know and love. <laughs> Some man, sometimes I feel like the blobfish. Oh, it's frowning. Yeah, sometimes, that, man, I feel you sometimes. Like on Saturdays where I just have nothing left, no makeup on, and I'm just blah, I feel you. So yeah, I take it and I make slides into it. I break down the questions. I even break down the actual questions and we pull apart like, 
if it's worth talking about point of view, okay, let's step back. What is point of view? Um, author's reasoning and evidence. Well, let's step back. What does that mean? What's reasons and what's evidence and the main point the author makes? It really breaks it down. Talk about vocabulary, strategies we can use on words they don't understand. Um, and so, yeah, some, I use it for intervention right now. Um, my ELA team and I are talking about using it for um, a couple standards that we have missed in our curriculum that this could meet and do it in small groups or homework. Um, so I definitely recommend this. I'm actually going to go home on Amazon tonight and see if there's any other ones. I know they have a fictional one, so I need to look at that. Um, but I know the non-fictional informational one, this one is incredible and I will definitely link it below. I got it on Amazon, really cheap. So that's what we're doing next week. Today, like I said, they took a poem. Um, we're reading the line, The Witch in the Wardrobe, and they read a poem called The Adventures of Isabel, and they had to compare contrast Lucy with Isabel and how they're both courageous and brave and they overcome obstacles and finding text evidence from that, and so that hit a couple standards. Um, I've also been loving, let me grab it, hold on. Our bell work I've been getting from Reading A to Z, and it's just readingatoz.com, and you can get a free trial or um, a subscription, and you get a lot of resources. And if you teach ELL or you have English uh, learners in your class, that is a really good resource as well to get things that will help them with um, vocabulary and uh, reading comprehension, all the things. And so they have da daily language practice um, for every grade. Oh, I don't know about every grade, but I know they have it for, I saw fifth, sixth, and seventh. So I'm pretty sure they have ones for um, younger and older, but they hit all of those foundational skills that we need to hit every single day. And so this kind of gets in to our foundational skills that we are required to have. And it's a really good because it gives the kids a learning guide. So this is the same thing. And I have them glue this into their uh, journals and then the actual bell work. Um, so again, this is the same thing. So I would cut it in half. And so this week uh, it'll hit on some more roots, which is always good. Anytime you can involve prefixes and, and really expose them to roots and suffixes and prefixes really help them with not only comprehension, but vocabulary and uh, context clues and all that stuff. So, oh yeah, that was vocabulary the next day. And it's nice because it has the days on it. Um, so I'll just say, get out your bell work and go to Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday's bell work. And this one's going to be hitting on, like I said, roots and verb tenses and also uh, prepositional phrases, which we just did a diagnostic on No Red Ink, which is another incredible site. If you were kids like mine struggle with grammar and punctuation and all the things mechanics, all the things, Mecha you know what I mean, grammar, whatever. No Red Ink is so good, and I only have the free version right now, so there's a lot of things locked, but I'm actually going to meet with a rep and see if we can get a free trial for all of it, because the writing component is incredible. It goes through each genre and does it step by step. Really interesting um, writing prompts. I assigned a prepositional phrase homework for next week on no writing because their diagnostics show that almost all the kids struggle with that, which we've hit prepositions, but we haven't come back around to it. So we need to spiral review it for sure. So anyways, they're going to hit that in their vocabulary. They are going to hit that in their homework and in their, um, bet work. I need to go home. I am tired. <laughs> It was a really good day. Uh, like I said, Friday, we, we really thought we weren't going to be here. Um, so we were, and at least it's Friday. So I can go home, rest. It is so cold. So I'm going to cozy up and watch Lost in Space. Oh my gosh, put away teacher talk. We need to talk about Lost in Space. Like, I'm not talking about the one from the 70s or 60s. Actually, I did love watching that as a kid. I'm not that old, but I did rewatch. I was an old soul. I watched like Andy Griffith, I Love Lucy, Three's Company. Anyways, Lost in Space, the newer version on Netflix is 
so good and we can watch it with our kids. There's, you know, a few words here and there, but it's so good. And the family, we just love the family and it's, oh, there's just such a good message to it and it's just so good. I hope you had a good day. Whatever day it is for you, I hope you are curled up in your comfies and enjoying a cup of coffee, chatting with me. Say hello below. I love having conversations in the comments below. So definitely check that out and check out the classic news article. Um, tell me what you guys are on this semester, like what you guys are learning, what your main standards are, and how you're actually doing as a human being, not just as a teacher, but as a human in 2022. So I'm going to sign off because I need to go home and hug on my babies thank you for coming along today guys and yeah comment below if you haven't joined the messy bun fam then definitely do that hit that subscribe button and i'll catch you guys later in the next video life can be messy but there's always joy to be found